Hello there people, this is Bruce B. Cool on Nintendo Bruce here, back again with another deck recipe for Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's Decade Jewels Plus. And this one is going to take some getting used to. This is my Strike It Lucky deck. And as the name implies, uh, besides having your normal luck in Yu-Gi-Oh! with luck of the draw and stuff, you need even more of it with this deck. Now that's not to say that it's an extremely difficult deck to play with, it's actually really fun, but most of the effects you'd want would be by flipping what, well, what you want with, <laughs> with luck, what can I say? So, uh, I'll, I'll go through it as we go along, so as per usual, go through the monsters, then the spells and the traps, and yeah, just summarise the deck a little bit more. So, starting off, 3 Blowback Dragon, yeah, very very good card, uh, yes it's a tribute, but what you get in exchange for that is uh, once per turn, flip a coin 3 times, if you get 2 heads, you get to destroy any card you fancy on the field, just beautiful, absolutely beautiful, and the thing is as well, is it's one of those cards that Stardust Dragon can't negate either, because it's one of those maybe cards, um, so yeah, fantastic, run 3 of those, uh, it's also a dark for Chaos Sorcerer here, you'll see a few lights in a moment. Uh, one Dandelion, because there will be times that those tokens will come in handy, i.e. Tribute for Blowback Dragon, Synchro, etc, etc. Now, my... I don't want to say second favourite card, I'd say it's on par with Relinquished. Dice Jar, beautiful, beautiful card. Its effect, when it's flipped, you both roll a dice. The one with a higher number inflicts that much damage as effect damage uh, times 500. So, say if you roll a 3 there and your opponent rolls 2, then you inflict 1500 damage to them. If you, if the winner gets a 6 though, then that other person takes 6000 damage. So, they roll a 1, you roll a 6. 6000 damage to them. Fantastic. If you both roll the same number, you just re-roll. So, in a nutshell, someone has to take damage. Uh, very, very, very gambly card this, and I love it. Look, there's three of them. And on top of that, there, it's a light. It will go into the, the Grave for Chaos Sorcerer. What more could you ask for? Now, another questionable card, Giant Kozaki here. Now, he's either going to be there for fodder, or for the opponent to take that little bit more uh, damage when they run into your face down. Uh, but especially, it's going to come in contact with Creature Swap. So, what you do, you set it, activate Creature Swap, you attack with the monster you've just gained, or attack with any other monster, and run into them. Yes, you might take a bit of battle damage, but they'll take 2500. Uh, if you don't have Creature Swap, and you are not, uh, you know they're not going to get finished by them running into you, uh, into defense mode, then don't play it. Use it as fodder for card destruction, uh, or just something similar. You get the point. One Marshmallow, because you might need that little bit of stalling, why not? And it does a thousand damage. Maximum six. Again, another gambly-like card. Um, if you think of the average of rolling a three, uh, then this card, more often than not, is going to be on 2500 attack. Uh, if you get higher than that, then great, you can even top a Blue Eyes White Dragon at 3100 attack. Uh, it saved me a few times as well, got me over Hyper Psychic Blaster. Uh, yeah, uh, another fun card to use. Tribute Monster, yes, but whatever. Morphing Jar, because you will need to refresh your hand as often as possible, especially to get through those continuous cards and set up the field. Neospatian Grandma, so I'm a bit of anti-meta going on here. If you're in a bit of a jam and someone's synchroed up or uh, doing whatever, being a pain in the ass, then get rid of that monster, send it back to their hand or extra deck. Lovely. One Plague Spreader Zombie. One Sangan to either find Morphing Jar, Dice Jar, or in fact quite a few little cards here. There's tons to choose from with Sangan, so definitely run one of those. Two Sasuke Samurai number four. Again, another gambly little card. Uh, you've probably seen from a previous video, I've taken down an elemental, uh, what's his name? Uh, it's like Rainbow Neos, I think it was with it. So yeah, anything can happen with this card. Second Coin Toss does help it out. In a nutshell, you attack, uh, or if you get attacked, you flip a coin, you call it right, the opponent's monster gets destroyed instantly. So they can't even get the effect from, say, being destroyed by battle, etc, etc. So yeah, run two of those. One Snipe hand, uh, Hunter, sorry, a little bit gambly there, but of course it could get around Stardust Dragon if the effect pulls off, and you could get rid of other annoying cards like Stally back row stuff. One Spirit Reaper, one Time Wizard. You know you're pro when you're playing Time Wizard. So its effect, you flip a coin, you call it right, 
then it's Raigeki. You blow up your opponent's monsters, all of them. You call it wrong, then you destroy all your monsters and you take half the combined attack of all those monsters as effect damage. Uh, so it can be risky. Definitely play with second coin toss or unless you're desperate. But yeah, again, can get you out of a jam and it's a light monster. Fantastic. And then to top off the monsters, we have two twin barrel dragons. Now, their effect, without second coin toss, you're only going to pull it off one in four times uh, on average. It, it, its effect, if you flip two heads, destroy any card on the field. But besides that little effect, it's nice as a 1700 attacker. You know, it, it's actually quite good for that. So, yeah, definitely run two of those. Going into spells now. Brain control, so you can use things as tribute or attack, etc, etc. Card destruction, if your hand is really that rubbish or you just want to speed through and find that card, then use it, definitely. Three creature swaps, because no doubt when you flip up that dice jar or summon that time wizard and not want to use its effect, or again, use that lovely, lovely giant Kozaki, you're going to want a creature swap. So, run three of those. Three cup of ace, beautiful, beautiful little gambly card. Again, this deck is for fun, so don't groan too much if the opponent does draw from it. But yeah, you flip a coin, heads, draw two cards, tails, your opponent draws two cards. Dangerous Machine Type 6. I really wanted to run two of these, but I just didn't have the room, unfortunately. But its effect, each of your standby phases, roll a dice. If you roll a 1 or a 2, then you discard a card or your opponent discards a card respectively. Roll a 3 or a 4, you draw a card or your opponent draws a card respectively. Roll a 5, destroy one monster your opponent controls. That's quite a nice little effect. Number 6, destroy this card. So, yeah, you don't you don't really lose out. It, it's a 50-50 card, but you know what? If, if your luck's with you, then you're going to end up doing the opponent some real damage. And bearing in mind, you can sort of manipulate things as well. So say if you've barely got a hand anyway, then set what you can. And if you end up uh, rolling a 1 next turn, it doesn't matter. You've got no uh, hand to destroy. Guard. So think about things like that. One giant tunade, one heavy storm, one monster reborn, two second coin toss. I find three is a bit too much. Just remember, with one of these, uh, or rather using it, you can only reflip a coin once per turn. So don't go absolute crazy like I think I did in one of my videos I've shown. Um, and yeah, use it on what you see fit, whether it be cup of ace, time wizard, barrel dragon. Uh, Twi uh, or sorry, Blowback Dragon rather, Twin Barrel Dragon, uh, Sasuke Samurai, there's tons of things that could be used with this, even these cards here. So, moving into the traps, Fairy Box, lovely card, absolutely lovely, you can throw people off when they can't get over a Dice Jar or a Dandelion. So, if your opponent attacks, you flip a coin, you call it right, the opponent's monster's attack becomes zero. So yeah, they run into your defense monster or they end up killing themselves uh, while you're in the attack position. Uh, yes, you pay 500 life uh, points every standby phase of yours, but that's a small amount to pay for such an awesome effect. And if you've got two of these going on, uh, obviously be a bit careful because that's the 1,000 per turn of yours. But yeah, it's about, with second coin toss, you're going to get about a 90% uh, strike rate of calling it correctly. You know, something like that, 90%, 88%, I can't even figure out what it might be. Bearing in mind, Fairy Box, that's a 50%, just one of them with it by itself. Yeah, run two of those, absolutely lovely. One Mirror Force, just in case, and a Torrential Tribute. So, I hope I've explained the main deck there. I'm going to say, anyway, pop your comments in the section below in case you're stuck or question any of the effects here. Moving into the extra deck, you're not going to get much of this out. All you've got is Plague Spreader. Yes, you do have Creature Swap for a few tuners. As I always say, have an extra deck anyway, just in case. So yeah, that's pretty bog standard extra deck there. Going to the side deck. Now there is some thought to this, okay, so bear with us. If you're up against a bit of a stally deck, then a bear Ushi, uh, however you pronounce it, a bear Ushioni. Uh, flip a coin, if you call it right, inflicts 1000 damage to your opponent, call it wrong, you take 1000 damage. Whatever. It, it, if they're stalling, then they deserve to take some damage. Another giant Kozaki, another maximum 6. Mechadog Marin, lovely little card. This one is a bit questionable though for the deck, I just ran it at first as a, a semi-burn gamble deck. But if it's destroyed by battle, you both take a thousand damage. Destroyed by any means, uh, any other means, your opponent only takes a thousand damage. A second dangerous machine type 6, Mystical Space Typhoon, appropriate. Now I would definitely suggest having two of these in the side deck, whatever you run, okay? Um, because you have to, bearing in mind what your opponent plays, okay? 
So its effect, you can only activate it when the opponent draws outside their draw phase. So whether that be through your own cup of ace or whatever. Um, and then any time after that the opponent draws outside the draw phase, you draw two cards. So whether that be you playing two cup of aces in a row, then you're going to benefit. Or if your opponent is playing things like uh, Destiny Draw, Allure of Darkness, um, even Morphing Jar again. Uh, yeah, you're going to benefit from two cards each time. So this sw swings cards more in your favour. This one's a bit questionable, three barrel behind the door. But you know what? That works with Giant Kazaki. So, worst case scenario, summon Kazaki, boom it goes to the graveyard, activate it and inflict 2500 damage to your opponent instead of yourself. One ceasefire, just because meh. One dice re-roll in case you were really scared of the dice jar. I say embrace the dice jar people, embrace it. And one magic slender because meh, that's why. So, there you have it guys, strike it lucky deck. Um, it's a very, very fun deck to play, a bit of getting used to. Uh, it definitely throws meta decks off their game, it throws any deck off their game, because it's it's a ridiculous deck. I, I can't explain it any other way, it's just stupid. Stupidly good that is, anyway. So, have a play with it, let me know your thoughts, you know, do, do give it a good go, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. So, again, pop your comments in the section below, let me know your thoughts, until next time. You guys take care, and I will see you again soon.